Okay, I built uh, Botkin's uh, two transistor Kickstarter CFL circuit today. And uh, this is a circuit that uh, he came up with, kind of like I came up with, and aromas. When you start burning out parts, you see if you can get it to work with what you got left. And uh, he got down to just two transistors. Actually, he was using, uh, I think, four. And uh, I knocked off two of them today just to see if it worked, but eliminated the little uh, two in. 222 transistor and just triggered the base of this one with a Kickstarter that uh, you just tap it to a positive and get it going with a Kickstarter and uh, I modified a little bit from what he had but uh, basically it's the same idea as you you get this into self oscillation by giving it a jolt of electricity and that gets the thing to oscillate um, on its own and then run the system and uh, anyway uh, like I say it's it's amazing what you can do with just a few parts if you're creative in uh, doing it and just shows what can be done but uh, this is how it all started it started with uh, um, aromas CFL where his 555 timer burned out and then he decided to see what he could do without the 555 timer and came up with this circuit uh, which started the the ball rolling uh, using a little uh, trigger transistor and then these uh, 2 n 3055 power transistors to make the CFL light circuit work and then after I did that I burned out um, two of these uh, trans actually one of these transistors in here um, I burned out this one and then uh, started running the circuit on the just three and then uh, the next day I thought you know what I'm just going to eliminate two of them and so I got it to run on these two plus the little trigger and some modifications and then uh, Bodkins burned out this one and found out you could run it on just the two power transistors so anyway I ended up with this and uh, one of the other guys uh, recommended uh, uh, modifying it slightly up in here too and I tried a whole bunch of different things today but I came up with just this extremely simple little circuit and if you keep the power down and I use a little rheostat up here to control the power if you keep the power down you won't burn that thing out. If you crank the power up, you're going to overheat that and burn it out. I also did some temperature testing today to see if that thing is actually running cold. It just runs at room temperature, at least in my setup. Um, I'm not getting any refrigeration going on there, but it's not getting hot. It's just running cold. So anyway, here's the setup over here. And uh, like I said, I'm just down to two two transistors. There's just two of them there. They were started out with... Uh, five transistors then it went to four three and then now two and uh, just to show you how this works is this is the little trigger right here and when you tap that to a power source it starts this whole thing in oscillation and runs the CFLs now the other thing that I played with today was the earth ground this part of it right here to see if we could eliminate the shocking that we're getting at least I was getting uh, badly shocked and uh, aromas got shocked pretty badly too and I found out that if you connect the earth ground to the ground part of the circuit and keep it away from the high voltage um, source it, it just eliminates that problem but having it with the high voltage on the circuit energizes the whole circuit and it might contribute to the situation here I don't know it's one of these things I really don't know how that's going to work but let me turn it on here. Sometimes this self starts and sometimes it doesn't. Let me see what happens here. Okay, see, I've got this connected now. I've got it connected. I've got no power draw. Here's my voltage and uh, no amperage draw in the system. Everything's frozen in time. But what I'm going to do is what Bodkins found out. If you give this a little jolt, if you get these transistors into motion, the thing will run. So what I'm going to do here is just jump start it. Okay, there goes the lights. And all I had to do was tap that right there, and there go the lights. Now I'm drawing um, 110 uh, milliamps on this, and uh, this does draw a little bit more this way than the other way, but it runs. <laughs> and I thought that was amazing that you could get this to run like this. Now I can dial this up and increase the brightness if I do it slowly. If it stops, you have to jump start it again. 
I'm going to put this up about 300 milliamps. And the reason that this is my target point right here is it's this much power that I draw on my standard 12 volt fluorescent bulb that I use on my boat. So what I'm trying to do is beat that light. And if I can get more lumens of light out of that amount of power, then I've, I've got something better than what I had before, which was a 12 volt fluorescent on the boat that drew about 320 milliamps at 12 volts. And so that's it. And there she is. She's running two bulbs right now. That's about as bright um, on each bulb as the one uh, bulb was on the boat. So I think I've gained on it. And another thing is, I can touch everything now and not get shocked and see if it's hot or whatever. And there's no shock coming off of this right now. Let me show you the high voltage though. You can still get that going. And that's all over the place. Okay. Now, if I, this is another little tester I got here. It's a neon that I use to see if I've got high voltage. If I hold this together real tight here, I don't get shocked. And I can see if there's high voltage on stuff. And you can see the high voltage. There it goes. I've got high voltage coming off of this thing. Yeah, so I've, I've got high voltage on it. But I wasn't, I wasn't getting shocked, which I don't know what the deal is on that. But see, I've got high voltage at at the battery and everywhere else on this. If I move the ground to the high voltage part, the lights got brighter, and this will this will go nuts now. This tester here will just go crazy. And it goes crazy everywhere. The light, the light will come on bright now. Watch this light. That will come on very bright anywhere I touch on the circuit. And like I say, we may want to keep it this way. I don't know. We just have to be careful we don't get shocked. But um, having this high voltage come out all over the place, there may be a way to tap this. I don't know. But uh, anyway, I like this circuit. I think this is a cool little circuit. just runs with two transistors. And uh, like I say, I, I ran it for a long time to see if it would run this way, and it does run this way. You just gotta, if it ever stops, you just gotta kickstart it with this thing, and you just tap that to a, a, a source, which is uh, the the battery source, and off she goes in self oscillation. The oscillator is really the coil, by the way, and uh, Aromas wanted me to listen to it with my radio, so that's what it sounds like. That's that's the sound of the. It's the coil in oscillation. It's the primary and secondary that are in oscillation there. Now, if I move the rheostat, I can change frequency on it. And watch the lights as I do that. But anyway, that's what this sounds like. But I like the fact you can make it quiet. <laughs> Some of the other circuits I've worked with, they were noisy. So anyway, that's the Bodkin's uh, Kickstarter CFL circuit. That was a lot of fun today.